So here we are finally with our Alienware M18 review. Big is back. Finally, an 18 inch, powerful, non-apologetically heavy and large gaming notebook. Slim and light laptops are so last year. And finally, this is what I've wanted, an 18 inch gaming laptop. Now, if you follow me on the channel, you'll know that I will always get the biggest laptop I can possibly get. I did have the old M18X from years ago and all the other 18 inch Alienware laptops. I've always loved them. They are heavy to travel with, they are bulky, but once you've set it up on a desk, having that 18 inch screen is absolutely amazing for gaming. So with regards to the spec in this big laptop, I've maxed out the CPU and the GPU. So I've got the i9-13900HX CPU, which is a 24 core 32 thread CPU, giving it amazing amounts of power. And we also bought the top end RTX 4090 GPU, the most powerful graphics card on the laptop market. Now, when it comes to the actual RAM and the SSD, I always go for the lowest amount I can get from Dell because their upgrades are expensive. And it's much cheaper to do it yourself. And we will be doing an M18 upgrade guide because this could be quite interesting on this laptop. So make sure you're subscribed if you're not already, if you want to see that video. And for the screen, I've got the QHD 165 Hertz 18 inch panel with G-Sync and Advanced Optimus. Now they do also have a 480 Hertz 1200p panel but I think at an 18 inch screen, I would much prefer the higher pixel density because at 1200p, you're gonna start seeing the pixels on this screen. Also with regards to the CPU and the GPUs, we have the option of the 13700HX and we also have the 4060, 4070 and the 4080 GPUs alongside this 1490. But the way I'm thinking, if I'm gonna get a laptop this big, I'm gonna spec it out. So let's start by taking a look around this laptop. Now this is the M series range, so it isn't the most premium X series range. And as such, you do lose a few of the features that you get in the X series. Now last year, when we had the M15 and the M17 laptops, I was a bit disappointed with the build quality, but this year that has been massively improved with this laptop. These feel so much more solid than last year's M series range. So this M18, although it's four kilograms in weight, which is pretty heavy, but being an 18 inch note, but you expect that, there is no creak, there's no give and no flex. It feels absolutely fantastic. The top of the lid and the bottom is all solid metal and the palm rest, it, I think it might be plastic underneath here but it's got a rubber coating on there which gives it a lovely feel but will pick up some actual fingerprints. And also being a large 8 inch laptop, Dell have done us proud with the ports and the good news is they're on both sides and the back. And you can see from the left side we've got a headset jack, two USB-A ports, an RJ45 and if I spin it over to the right side you can see we've got a USB-C port. And then the majority of the other ports are on the back. So if we go from left to right, we've got the power supply, a full size SD card slot, a mini display port, an HDMI 2.1, another USB-A port, and two Thunderbolt 4 ports. So as you can see with this big laptop like this, as a desktop replacement, that's an excellent selection of ports. Now my only gripe is who on earth designed this and put the full size SD card slot on the back and the RJ45 on the side. It makes absolutely no sense to me because you're gonna be plugging in and out the SD cards regularly, whereas the RJ45, you're gonna plug in your Ethernet cable and leave it. Also, other than the RJ45, the majority of the cables that you're gonna plug in and leave are at the back of the machine. So it does keep this laptop looking nice and tidy when you've got most of the cables plugged in at the back, but you can plug in your drives and other bits and pieces on the side whenever you wanna plug something in and out of the machine. So this is a great layout on the whole, other than that RJ45 and SD card slot. If they'd swapped those over, it would've been perfect. Now we're gonna take a quick look at the RGB. So this year, like last year, with the M series range, you can see we've got the lit Tron ring, which gives you a pretty much a single color zone that you can select. We've also got the RGB alien head on the back of the screen. Then as I spin it round, you can see we've got the alien head power button, which can be adjusted in anywhere command center. And we have got the per key RGB keyboard. And as I'm talking about the RGB keyboard, I wanna also point out the fact that we have a number pad on this model. Now, if you buy the X16 or the M16 this year, you get the old style keyboard, which is more centered with media keys on the side, but no number pad. But when you buy the big boy, this M18, you get the full size number pad. And they still give you the dedicated media keys. They just put it above the number pad, making a great layout for someone that wants a full size keyboard. And as always with Dell, you get the choice of having the scissor switch keyboard or the Cherry MX mechanical keyboard. Now I've chosen the scissor switch keyboard. I absolutely love these, they're quiet, but they have an amazing typing experience. They've got great pressure, good spacing, and a great feel. It's one of my favorite typing experience on a gaming notebook. I've also tested the mechanical keyboard in previous years. 
The mechanical keyboard is like a cherry blue, it's clicky and it also feels amazing. So it's total preference whether you want the sort of quiet scissor or if you want the louder, clicky, cherry and mechanical switch. So moving down to the trackpad, it is quite a decent sized trackpad and it feels very nice, but it is plastic so it doesn't feel quite as premium as the X series range, which is a bit of a shame. These are still expensive notebooks, but still it works very well and I had no problems using it during my testing. You may notice there's no speaker grills like the X16. We've got downward firing speakers on this model and they sound like this. Speaker test of the Anywhere M18 at 50% volume. Now 80%. They certainly get loud, but to be honest, they could do with a bit more bass and you know, it's just, it's an okay listening experience. And as I move up to the screen, we've got the 165 Hertz 18 inch panel. This is a 2560 by 1600, so a good pixel density on the screen. Now when I saw the Anywhere announcement, I was a bit disappointed that we didn't get the 500 nit 240 Hertz screen like the Razer Blade 18, but having used this screen, I've had no issues with it. The colors are pretty good. It feels responsive, there's no ghosting and it does get reasonably bright in my environment, but I would have still have preferred the 500 nits. That's my only disappointment. And it's something that maybe Alienwell may add later, fingers crossed. Now up above the screen, we've got the Windows Hello IR facial recognition to log you in and the webcam looks and sounds like this. And this is the test of the webcam and the microphones on the Alienware M18. And now we're gonna quickly shut it down. I'm gonna open this up and talk about the internals. Now getting inside this laptop is reasonably straightforward. You just undo the eight screws. The front two forward screws actually prise the base plate away from the laptop, making it easier to get in. But they do use some stiff clips holding the base plate on. So you're gonna need a pry tool across the front just to lift this plate away from the machine. But once you've done that, you pull the actual base off and we're inside the laptop. Now the great news is, if you buy the 4080 or the 4090 version of this laptop, you get some amazing upgradability. On all the models, you get two RAM slots, so you can upgrade from the 16 gigabyte I've got in this model, all the way up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. And this 4080 and 4090 has two 80 millimeter M.2 Gen 4 slots, and also another two 30 millimeter Gen 4 slots, giving you a grand total of four SSD options in this machine. And I mean, obviously this is a bigger 18 inch laptop, it's so nice having four SSDs, especially with the size of games getting bigger and bigger these days, or if you're planning on using this for maybe video editing or something that does use a lot of actual disk space. Now sadly, if you buy the 4060 or the 4070 version of this laptop, Dell, in their usual Dell ways, actually remove the two 30 millimeter SSD slots. There's no reason to do that, apart from to force you to try and buy the 4080 or 4090. I think that's a really sly by Dell. It would have cost them pence to add those connectors back in because all the traces are there and there's no reason to do it other than greed. Also, the Wi-Fi card is upgradable in this machine. We've got a nice 97 watt hour battery, and you'll also notice some strange fan layouts in this model. We've got the two large fans at the rear, pushing the hot air out the back grill and the sides of the machine. We've also got one extra fan, getting some extra heat out, probably from the GPU on just one side. And you'll notice the tiny little fan in the middle of the back of the machine. Now this is blowing air in towards the RAM slots, keeping the RAM nice and cool. So it feels great that Anywhere have actually made an effort with the cooling solution in this machine. Now unfortunately, as always with Anywhere, the motherboard is inverted, so you cannot get access to the vapor chamber without taking the entire laptop apart, and the fans are not gonna be easy to get out with also without removing the motherboard, making maintenance and repasting quite difficult on these machines. But enough about that, let's take a look at the performance on this actual laptop. So we're gonna start with the actual CPU in these machines. Now, as I mentioned, this comes with the upgraded i9-13900HX. This is a 24-core, 32-thread CPU, which leads to some excellent performance. And in our Cinebench R23 multi-core performance score, we scored about 30,000 points, which is pretty incredible. These 13th gen CPUs are seriously powerful. The single-core performance is also excellent, leading to some great Geekbench 5 scores. Now, my only real disappointment with this is that these HX chips should be unlocked, allowing you to either undervolt, overclock or adjust the multipliers. But unfortunately, as of the moment, Alienware has that totally locked down and I can't do anything. Now in the Alienware command center, there is supposed to be some ability to adjust this CPU, but they've had a couple of releases so far and they've mucked around with it, but it still isn't working properly. Now I'm hoping this is something Dell is gonna fix 
and I will put it out on update if they do. But as of the moment, when you're buying the CPU, you're getting it as is, you're not gonna be mucking around with it. And after having tweaked my Razer Blade 16 with an HX CPU and seeing what it's capable of with a bit of an undervolt and an overclock, or maybe even adjusting the multipliers to make the machine quieter, this is a real shame we can't do that here. Now Dell, I know you watch these videos. Come on, get a BIOS update out and unlock these chips. Now moving across to the GPU, and I have got the RTX 1490, which is the fastest graphics card currently available for laptops, and this thing absolutely flies. We've got 175 watt TGP on this graphics card, giving it the maximum power budget, and in this nice big chassis, has no problems calling it. And in the synthetic benchmarks, I'm gonna get some incredible scores, which has by far exceeded my expectations of gaming laptops in 2023. And in all honesty, this 4090 could well be overkill in a lot of cases for this QHD panel. This could probably push a lot of 4K games. So if you do run this to an external monitor, you're gonna have no problems with this 4090. And being honest, I think the majority of people would probably be better served with a 4080 version and a few hundred pounds or more in their pocket. So switching away from synthetic benchmarks and moving through some games, and the gaming experience on this machine is absolutely fantastic. And this is obviously why you're buying an Alienware 18 inch gaming laptop. We've got multiple profiles that can be adjusted through Alienware Command Center, ranging from quiet, balance, performance, and overdrive. And each of those has a unique sound profile. Gaming on the quiet mode was very impressive at about 46 decibels. And then those scale up right through the profile, so you put it on overdrive mode, is at 55 decibels, which is incredibly loud, but gives you great temperatures. Now, as always with Dell, the CPU will hit 100 degrees centigrade whilst you're gaming. That is a bit of a shame, but Dell allows this machine to pull up to 100 watts on the CPU whilst also pulling 175 watts on the GPU. That's a lot of temperature to pump through this laptop. And as always, if you don't like it hitting 100C before throttling back, you can go into the BIOS and adjust the TCC, which is the throttle cutoff point, to bring that temperature down. And what also has been massively improved this year in the Alienware range over last year is not only are the fans quieter on the different profiles, there's no annoying whine or hum with this fan cooling system. I've been really pleased gaming on this laptop. It's a lovely experience. What I also love is the fact that the palm rest and the keyboard do not get even remotely hot in my long-term gaming sessions. And having gamed and tested a lot of thin and light gaming laptops where the heat of the components roast through the actual keyboard and palm rest, leading to a scorched hand, which is very uncomfortable in my experience, this is really pleasant. I think that's something that anywhere I have always worked on is the comfort of the gaming experience. And that's something I do love with this machine. Okay, so with performance out of the way, let's take a quick look at the battery life. Now hopefully if you're buying a monstrous machine like this, you're not planning on using it in a Starbucks, but if you do happen to want to use it on battery, I'm afraid it's not the most amazing of news. In our usual YouTube stream test over Wi-Fi at 200 nits of brightness, we managed to get about four hours of battery life. Now although that's not great, it's pretty standard for Intel's 13th generation gaming laptops. But as always, the performance on battery with Intel chips is pretty impressive. In the Windows default power mode, the scores are quite lackluster, but if you put it in the better performance mode, we actually get some really healthy performance out of the CPU on battery. And unfortunately, the same can't be said the same for this 4090 GPU, which obviously consumes a lot of wattage to get the best out of it. On the battery mode, it was really quite poor, leading to very light use only whilst on battery life. So maybe a bit of League of Legends or Dota or some very other light eSport title is gonna be playable on battery. And if you are trying to game on battery, this thing will probably die in half an hour anyway. So as always, with a gaming laptop, make sure you take your power supply. Now, Dell have provided the slim 330 watt GAN power adapter with this model, which is really quite nice after using the brick for the last few years, which is absolutely monstrously heavy and very large in your laptop bag. This new 330 watt GAN charger that they're provided with these new M18 laptops is really quite slim. But one of the features we are missing from the M series range that you do get on the X series is there's no power delivery charging on these laptops. And that is a real shame because there's no reason for Dell not to provide the 100 watt PD charging on the M series like they do on the X series or many other laptops out there. And it can't be anything to do with cost. This cost me three and a half thousand pounds in the UK. I could buy a thousand pounds Lenovo Legion laptop and they have power delivery charging on them. So this is just pure Dell trying to cut out features on their M series for no other reason to try and push you to the X series. And whilst I'm getting the gripes out of the way, another thing that annoys me is the new Alienware Command Center software. They promised us a great new Alienware Command Center software for this year, and there is a new Alienware Command Center software, but it isn't great. 
Now, I did moan about this quite a lot in my Alienware X16 review, and I will put a link to that review down in the description down below. So I'm not gonna rehash all of my moans, but I will just say it isn't a great piece of software, and it's probably one of the worst pieces of software on a gaming notebook out there. And my biggest gripe using it on this Anywhere M18 is A, it does crash every now and again when you're changing the actual performance profiles, and B, I really don't like the fact it automatically picks up all the games in your library, which is great, and it will give you a profile per game. But the problem you've got is it overrides your default profiles. Now sometimes if I'm in a quiet environment, I may want to run everything in quiet mode. Yet as soon as I fire up a game, it'll automatically default to performance mode for that game. Now this is a real hassle and totally unnecessary. If I want to override that, I should be able to. So hopefully if Dell, if you're watching this, please add better customization to your software. So that leads me through to the conclusion. And I've really loved my time with this Alienware M18 laptop. This is a true desktop replacement machine. Now I personally love desktop replacement laptops and the bigger the better. And I love this massive 16 by 10 H and inch screen. If you're planning on gaming on the laptop itself and you don't mind moving it from desk to desk or from place to place, once you've plonked this down on your desk, this is a fantastic screen to game on. It does feel like you don't need an external screen when gaming on this monitor. Whereas if you've got a 15 inch or a 16 inch laptop, I do very often think, oh, I wish I could plug in my 25 or 27 inch laptop into this. Now with this, I could just happily game on this machine itself. And the gaming experience is very comfortable. It remains cool on the actual chassis itself, which is great when you're gaming. The keyboard is fantastic. The screen is great and the speakers are pretty good. So overall, I'm really impressed with this and I would personally buy this for my gaming machine. Now, yes, there are some niggles, mostly the Alienware Command Center, which I moan about on every Alienware. And it's something I really thought Dell would have improved by now. And it's a real shame they didn't add power delivery to this because that's really handy to be able to take this into your office environment and you do office work on a USB-C charger. And obviously the battery life isn't gonna be amazing, but we don't expect that from these Intel laptops at the moment. It's something I wish Intel would sort out. But if you're looking for a desktop replacement and you're not worried about the weight and the size of the machine, this is a fantastic candidate. Well, that's my thoughts on this Anywhere M18. As always, I'd love to know what you guys think. Please leave a message in the comment section down below and I will get back to you. And as always, thanks for watching.